My name is Omar Mingo. I'm Rachel Angresco. I'm Amber Lutz. And I'm Hannah Bowers. And my name is I.K. Noda. <laughs> and our project is Bird is the Word. And it covers the transitions from dinosaurs to birds. And to start us off, Amber Lutz. Okay, so before 240 million years ago, as you can see here, um, during the late Triassic period, the, first, the very first dinosaurs inhabited the Earth. Um, during this time, there was only two continents, and the climate was very warm, and it's very tropical. Um, the first fossils of theropods shown here, um, you can see that um, it appeared in the late Triassic period, and these theropods had characteristics of being bipedal, meaning they walked and ran on two hind feet. They were carnivorous, they had um, large teeth, small brains, and narrow heads. So not until the early Jurassic period here, when the reptiles started to diversify rapidly into many different species of dinosaurs. So as you can see, as Amber said, on the timeline, this is where the diversification of dinosaurs was very uh, prevalent on Earth until 150 million years ago where scientists uh, hypothesized that there was a mass extinction and was, that was caused by either an asteroid or a volcano or some mass event that filled the sky with dirt, soot, and um, smoke and clouds like that, uh, which decreased the population of the plants and uh, made them very scarce. And this was very detrimental to the large body dinosaurs because their large bodies are uh, very, they were all herbivores, or most of them were herbivores, and they used that to break down cellulose. Um, but as we can see on the phylogenetic tree, the dinosaurs did have a variation, uh, which were the theropods. And the theropods are small carnivorous dinosaurs uh, that were bipedal. And they had the advantage because they were carnivorous, they didn't have to have those plants to hunt for during the mass extinction. Okay, so it was hypothesized that based on shared features between the reptiles and the birds, that the birds evolved from theropod ancestors. Um, although these features are shared among the birds and the reptiles, um, it's the, um, many of them are derived or modified. So the first derived characteristic that we're going to talk about are the reduced digits. So here, like pretty much the central part of our poster, we have a giant phylogenetic tree. Um, sh with pictures next to each dinosaur showing how their digits were reduced from the large body dinosaurs to the living birds today. So first we're going to take a look at the um, large body dinosaurs and here the digits from this picture there's just a reduction of digits four and five but as you go into the early theropods um, there's a complete loss of digit five um, while digits two and three stay about the same length and this character is then um, shared throughout the rest of the theropods and living birds beneath it. But then as you go to this theropod right here, there's a complete loss of digits four and five, um, while digit two actually grows a little longer. And then as you continue down the tree, those um, same characteristics remain, but there's a reduction of digit three. And in this picture, there's a slight um, elongation of digit two. And eventually, once you get to the Archaeopteryx, um, there's a uh, significant elongation of digit two compared to digits three and one. Okay, so our, the very first known bird ever is the Archaeopteryx shown here and up here. And the Archaeopteryx is, is a theropod. It is the intermediate species between reptiles and birds. And since it is the intermediate species, species it has both characteristics of reptiles and birds. So um, it had shoulder girdles, a pelvis, and feet that are distinct from dinosaurs. The bones were reduced, like living birds, and they also had claws. Um, unlike living birds today, they had teeth and a long bony tail like reptiles. They also had flexible wrists and hollow thin walled uh, bones. And then continuing down to the last um, species on our trees, the living bird, um, the picture here shows a reduction of digit one, while digits two and three are fused together. And although it varies slightly from living birds nowadays, that's the um, common structure of the limb. And then as we're talking about um, reduction of limbs, there's also the reduction of bones that's occurring at the same time under digits one and two. And if you can see in this picture, there's a lot of colors here that are spread apart, but, and that's the early um, theropod. But as you move in time, 
the colors become actually kind of um, faded together, which represents the uh, like fusions of the bone, and there's fewer colors showing the reduction. So as you get to the living bird today, there's much fewer, and these uh, smaller fused bones actually allow the wrist to move in a different, or rotate differently than it could before, and this rotation allows the um, birds to create a thrusting motion which could be used for flying. Okay, so our great transition that's occurring here is the evolution of limbs to wings. So an important derived characteristic that's important for this um, transition is the feathers. So originally, um, the feathers on the reptiles were um, used for insulating the eggs, and um, over millions of years it co-opted for um, use of flight or advanced improvements of flight. And to kind of reiterate what you're saying and show some fossilized evidence of, evidence of that, we have these three pictures right here. And this is one of the early theropods, and it just has hollow cynical feathers from the fossil record. And it's hypothesized that these feather, very primitive feathers were used as a form of insulation. But as we move on to the second picture, it's hypothesized that the feathers that became dosed with barbels and hooks were used to not only insulate itself, but eggs, because this is a fossilized um, theropod laying over some of its eggs to keep them warm. And then as we move down to our final picture, this is um, further in time, um, closer to the present. You can see how the feathers have gotten longer. They they're still dosed, but they've come, become asymmetrical, the veins specifically, and that um, allows for an improvement of life. Okay, and so as we're talking about derived characteristics, there's two more major ones, and one is um, just the overall change in size of the birds. So the birds are much smaller than their dinosaur ancestors. And here's a chart. So over the millions of years, you can see just how the body size dramatically decreases from the dinosaurs to the birds. And then, so we have the change in size, and then, um, oh, well, well, we need to say how this happens. And um, one hypothesis is that the birds just don't grow at the same rate as the dinosaurs did. So um, they just change less between the time that they hatch and the time that they reach adulthood. Um, okay, so after the change in size is the formation of a beak. And so we were wondering how the dinosaur face changed more to a bird-like face. And so the face got flatter, and then the eyes got bigger, the brain got bigger, and um, the snout got more round and long. I mean, not more round, it's like thinner and longer. So it forms a beak. Um, and so recently, a study just looked how this change might occur from the dinosaur snout to the bird beak. And they were able to identify two genes that were responsible for this change. And so they did a study and they compared the expression of the two genes in the face of a chicken embryo and an alligator embryo. And they took the chicken embryo and they blot the genes that were responsible for the round nose. And um, the result was a bird embryo that looked more like a dinosaur face. So, I have another picture for this one. Um, here's the skull of a normal looking bird, or the chicken, and then here's the skull of an alligator. And so this one, the intermediate, is when they blocked the genes that caused the bird beak. And what they found was a more reptile looking nose, so a rounder nose with bigger eyes that were more on the front rather than on the side. And so this is just an example of how like little molecular tweaks can make big structural changes over millions of years. <laughs> okay, so I got one question. Why did they use the alligator, and they couldn't use any other reptile. They could have used the turtle, the lizard, but they used the alligator. Well, I got an answer to that question. Maybe that's because the classical hypothesis is that birds are more related to reptiles than any other organism. So, here on this biology nature, you see that the crocodilian and the bird are sister taxi, but sister taxi indicating the strong relationship. But of course, other scientists would like to challenge this idea. So other scientists believe that birds are more related to mammals than crocodiles or reptiles. And 
this is crazy because we've been trying to tell you that birds came from dinosaurs, but why would they want to think that? Well, maybe that's because birds and mammals are endothermic, which means that they both generate their own body heat, and reptiles are ectothermic, which means that they need an external source to gain body heat. So, a more recent study analyzed three mitochondrial genes, which are slow evolving genes that are good to analyze relationships between organisms. And they found that these genes supported the hypothesis that birds are more closely related to reptiles than any other organism. So going back to what Hannah said in her embryo study, it shows why the alligator was a good model organism for the bird. All right, take <laughs> So why did the dinosaurs uh, evolve to a lineage and now are the extant bird species? Well, uh, since we don't have any dinosaurs that are phylogenetically, uh, well, phenotypically similar to the ones we know uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago, uh, scientists have come up with a lot of hypotheses of why and a lot of data to present of why the, um, the dinosaurs evolved into the birds. And this is all um, a part of it. But a big uh, key in that is smaller feathered dinosaurs were able to explore different ecological niches, allowing them to survive and drive evol evolutionary change to extant bird species. And basically, what that means is that these uh, theropods were able to survive the mass extinction because they were, a they were able to eat smaller uh, prey, find different food sources, and avoid predators because of their feathers, which, like Emerson said, co-opted uh, so they could fly, glide, and inhabit different ecological niches. And uh, over the whole, over the 150 million years uh, since uh, we've seen these dinosaurs, the dinosaurs went about 12 separate uh, uh, gen genetic mutations to go from 163 uh, kilograms to 0.8 kilograms for the Archaeopteryx, which is known as first bird. Um, so instead of there being zero dinosaurs left on Earth, there are actually about 10,000 species of dinosaurs still living and breathing today. Oh, now, <laughs> let's go run with the dinosaurs. <laughs> so, this is a dinosaur in the woods. He's running, he's running. Hey, Bob. Look at that, and he's changing. This is millions of years, millions of years. He's, he's going up. Look at that, he has feathers now. <laughs> Cause that's after the mass extinction. Take him. He's gone. That's the Archaeopteryx. He's flying. He's still flying. He's still flying. All right, now. Oh, he's going away. He's getting smaller. <laughs> but look at that. He's now a bird in 2016. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our presentation on Burning the Word. Thank you for coming out. From the research I did, uh, I'm obviously not an expert. From the research I, I did, you're an expert in that's here. that's when the feathers became um, more like, like thicker and able to like produce more insulation. Whereas here they were very primitive and it could only insulate. <coughs> but from here and here they became dosed, and also that's when veins start to appear in the feathers, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. And I think the veins help make a more structured feather, so there's more functions with it. Um, okay, can I follow up with another question? And I don't know that you'll know this because I don't know this, but do they think that, um, have they, has anybody that you, did you come across that, that, that you see this, how scales and feathers are um, similar or not? Yeah, or? I did see that. It was, um, actually the, they're made of the same thing actually, um, because they're actually scales on birds' feet, and they say that when they compare those to the scales of the dinosaurs, that they're actually the same thing. I did come across that. I didn't put that in the presentation. Anybody else have a question?
questions? You guys did an excellent job.